So here's another feature in Excel that I'm going to teach you. It's something that I use uh, several times a month. It's the concatenate feature and it's used to string several cells together in whatever way that you want them strung together. And as you will see, I have a fictional uh, employee list here. We have the first name, last name, employee number, start month, and start year. So let's say for some reason I want I want this information combined. I don't want it in separate uh, separate cells because that's just not going to work for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here. In, uh, in the first cell, you know, with, with in the, the first line of data, and I'm going to click on the insert function uh, button here, and uh, I'm using Excel 2010, but it's going to be similar in probably whatever recent version that you're using, and so it, in my Excel, it's right up here, but, you know, maybe in yours it's not, so I'm just going to look type in, in this little box here, concat, enter, and there we go. So it joins concatenate function, it joins several text strings into one text string. So you can memorize the formula or you can use this wizard which just makes it so much easier. So I'm just going to click on OK, move this guy down a little bit. So text one. So that's the first bit of text that I want to include. So I'm just going to click on Troy, and then I can just hit Tab, or I can just click down here. So then I want a space because if I don't enter a space, it's just going to mash it up to the next bit of text that I select. So space. So I'm going to click in text three. So now I want his last name. So I click on that. And now I want a comma and a space. And then I want uh, I want it to read employee number. And if you notice, I have it already typed in up here. So I'm just going to click on that box. But now we're going to just copy this data down. So unless I tell this data that I only want this cell, it's going to just go down to the next cell and and on and and so on. So I need something to say only pull the data from C1. So you do that by entering a dollar sign. So I'm going to enter dollar sign C dollar sign one. So that tells it pull only from C1. Doesn't matter what I'm doing with the rest of the text. I only want this being pulled from C1. And an awesome thing of using this wizard here is you can look down and you can see your results showing right here. So if there's something a little screwy going on, you can fix it while it's up. And it's super easy to fix it after you've, um, after you've already done everything. Super easy. So we have Troy, space, McGuire, comma, space, employee number. So I'm going to hit tab, space, nope, I'm not going to, I don't want a space, so I'm going to delete that, employee number, so I'm going to click there, boom, and then now I'm going to type in my own text because what I want isn't showing here, so I'm going to hit tab again, space, started on, started in tab march tab space of tab 2007 so it looks like I have my formula pretty well uh, written out so I'm just going to click on OK oh nope we can look down here formula results you can see I'm missing a space right here in March. Nope. So I need to click right here. You know what? I'm going to show you how to fix it afterwards. So let's just pretend we didn't see that. I'm going to click on OK. 
Oh no. See, the spacing's off. There should be space between in and March and of in 2007. So, well shoot, I just did all that work. I don't want to undo it. Well, I don't have to. All I have to do is click on this function button and I can go down and fix it. So started in needs a space afterwards and of needs a space afterwards. And okay, there we go. That's perfect. That's exactly how I want it. Now, I don't want to do this for all of these. So I'm just going to go up to the corner here and see how it's in big white plus. And when I get to the corner, it changes to skinny black plus. So I'm going to left click, hold down, and I'm going to drag this. See how the selection is picked out with the little dotted lines there? That means it's copying the formula down to the other results. So you can see that it has copied the same formula down and it's just concatenated all of this information. Now there's another way you can do it. You know, it's up to you. So I'm just going to delete this. So I can click on the formula here, click copy, and then I'm going to highlight down and paste. And I get the same results. Now, if you look up here, you can see if I were to copy this, I'm just going to do control C and just paste it right here. You see, it gets all screwed up, and we don't want that, so I'm going to delete that. So, what we can do to change this from a formula to data is highlight the column, copy, and then see this little arrow under paste paste the values and you can see it has the data pasted instead of the formula. I'm just going to do a quick undo to show you how it changes up here. So we have the result or we have the formula. So whatever works best for you is what you can do but it's good to know both ways of doing that just in case Maybe you need to copy this and paste it into an Outlook email or into Microsoft Word or some other program. But it's good to know multiple ways of doing something just to suit whatever your end result requires. So I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and I look forward to teaching you more in the future. Have a great day.